Have you ever been in a dry place? Have you ever longed for more of God? Have you ever felt like you're in a wilderness? If you have, then you understand that that wilderness can seem to last forever. That place where the Lord has you, where you're not quite where you're going, but you're not where you were, and you're somewhere in between. And it can feel like a very dry place where you're seeking after comfort and joy. You just lost what you've known, and now you're headed towards something you don't know about yet. So we're going to look at that today in the Closer to Jesus podcast. We are going to look through the Word and look at David in the stronghold. When he was in, in the wilderness, how his friend Jonathan came and gave him a blessing. He was an encouragement and how we can be like Jonathan and how the Lord is our Jonathan. <laughs> he encourages us and he gives us comfort. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Closer to Jesus podcast. My name is Ashley Enos, and I'm convinced that the answer to every problem is a deeper understanding of who Jesus is and how he shares his heart with us. Colossians 2.3 tells us that in him are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Each episode will be dedicated to strengthening our relationship with Jesus and growing more in love with Him every day, hanging on the promise of James 4 8, which says, If we draw closer to God, He will draw closer to us. Psalm 63 1 says, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee, my soul thirsteth for thee, and my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. David was talking out of the stronghold. He was speaking out of the wilderness of Judah. He had been running from Saul and he put pen to paper. He sang this song. He wrote about what he was expressing. And so we are going to look at that wilderness place. The wilderness is a place of pasture. It's a place of desert when you're not sure exactly what's in front of you and David wasn't sure. He knew that God had anointed him, that he was going somewhere with the Lord, but in between that was a lot of battles. It was a lot of back and forth. It was just an up and down experience for David. He needed a God who was stable, who would be his rock, and that's what he found. He anchored his soul in who the Lord is. And when we look at his experience in the wilderness, we can gain from that experience and and find hope and and renew our faith and be like David and see what he saw and do what he did and hear a word from the Lord for our situation today. 1 Samuel 23 14 says, And David abode in the wilderness in strongholds and remained in a mountain in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul sought him every day, but God delivered him not into his hand. So we read in the book of Psalms where David said, Early will I seek you. He sought God first thing in the morning because every day Saul was seeking after him. He needed his refuge, his strength from the Lord in order to make it through the day. He didn't have a choice. And when you're in the wilderness place, you're in this in-between, I don't know where I'm going, but I'm sure not where I used to be. I don't know what's ahead. You need a strong tower. You need a refuge. You need truth. You need someone who will tell you exactly what is going on, exactly what you need to hear so that you can advance. And David, in that stronghold, in that place of refuge, he abode in the wilderness. It means he lived in the wilderness, but in the middle of your wilderness, you have an anchor to your soul. And so every single day, Saul (laughs) sought David. That's all that was on Saul's mind is, how can I get to David? How can I ruin David? How can I take David out of the picture? Because Saul knew that David was going to supplant him. He knew that David would be next on the throne, that there was something about David that was really special. And David, he couldn't leave. He couldn't go outside the will of God. He couldn't run to another country and far away and never think about the promises on his life ever again. He had to stay in the will of God in order to do what he was anointed to do. And staying in the will of God meant dealing with Saul. And so God would be his strength in those battles. We continue with verse 15 says, And David saw that Saul was come out to seek his life. And David was in the wilderness of Ziph in a wood. So in the midst of the wilderness, David had a friend. He had someone he could lean on. Jonathan was Saul's son, and Jonathan loved David. And David loved Jonathan. They had a, their souls were bound together. They had a soul tie. They were friends. They knew each other very well. They cared about each other and looked out for one another. And David was running from Saul. If you can imagine this experience on Jonathan's 
from Jonathan's perspective, Jonathan had to have felt like torn. He was in between. He was in the middle and he had to make a choice and he chose to love David. And so he went to David and David saw that Saul was come out to seek his life and David was in the wilderness of Ziph in a wood and Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David into the wood and strengthened his hand in God. Jonathan went to encourage David. He said unto him, Fear not, for the hand of Saul my father shall not find thee, and thou shalt be king over Israel, and I shall be next unto thee, and that also Saul my father knoweth. He's telling David, Don't be afraid. This is what's going to happen. He was prophesying over David, letting David know, Hey, what you're experiencing is very real, and it matters. The call in your life matters because you're going to be king, and Saul knows this, and that's why he's after you. So don't be discouraged, be encouraged because there's a purpose for what you're going through. It's not just because, it's not that God has forsaken you, it's not that you are alone or without help, it's because this is just the process of getting you to the promise. And that process is sometimes a dry place, it's a wilderness. It's not knowing what to do for sure, just believing on God and hoping you're making right decisions following his word and trusting on him. But the Lord did not leave David without a friend. And Jesus, he's so good to us. He gives us a friend. He himself is that Jonathan in our life, that encourager, the one who speaks to us about where we're headed and and what we're doing. And he gives us vision for the future so that no matter what we're facing, we can overcome. Because the word tells us that without vision, the people perish. And so we have to lean on God. We don't have to lean on God. We don't have to do anything. We choose to lean on God. We choose to trust Him. But if we want peace, He's the way. In this dry desert land, He's the one that gives us water. Are you doing your best to be a prayer warrior, but finding it difficult to keep going? Are you wondering what it takes to be the type of woman who moves mountains for herself and her family? There must be a secret to not giving up. Life often settles around women. We listen, ask questions, and take other people's burdens to the Lord. If we are confused about who we are in Christ, we become much less effective intercessors for those we love. In the world we live in, weak prayers simply won't do. It takes an inner strength found only in the Word of God to fight the lies of the enemy and pray until the answer comes. The key to a strong prayer life is knowing who Jesus is and who we are in Him. This 31-day guided tour will reveal the source of inner strength and wash away any doubt about your ability to be a woman of God who sees miracles unfold around her. Readers will walk away having had a meaningful, personal encounter with Jesus and an awakened understanding of their important role in the kingdom of God. John 12, 46 Jesus said, I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Jesus is a light into a dark place. In a wilderness, if you're in the wilderness, if you're going through something hard, Jesus will be the the umbrella (laughs) and he'll hold a light to help guide you through it. He's your friend. He's there with you, comforting you and giving you what you need. He's shining a light ahead so that you know the next step to take. You may feel that God has forsaken you. When Jesus was on the cross, he said, why have you forsaken me? And if Jesus can feel that way, then it's only natural that we would feel that way. Why has God forsaken me? Why am I in this by myself? You brought me here. Why do I feel alone? The disciples, when they were in the boat, in the ship with Jesus, Jesus said, get in the ship. (laughs) And he took them across the waters. And while Jesus was asleep, there was a big storm. And when that storm came, they ran to Jesus and they said, you don't even care. Do you even care that we're about to drown? But Jesus got up and he fixed the storm and he rebuked them for their lack of faith. Why why don't you believe? And in the wilderness, when it feels like we're alone and the storms come and the things happen, the incidences happen, the situations happen, the words are said. And what I'm even seeing now in the spirit is door slamming and words being said and fights happening and just a rough, a rough situation where you feel like these doors keep slamming in my face. You feel like these words keep being spoken over and over and over again. The wilderness has become a place of repeat for you. It's I'm experiencing this over and over and over. 
when the storm comes in that wave, it's it's the same wave. It hits against the boat over and over and over. And we learned that Saul sought David over and over and over. Every day, David woke up with the same problem. And yet, there was a word of comfort. Don't fear. Don't be afraid. You're going to be king. And so Jesus is telling us here that he is the light of the world. And in the midst of that storm and that problem that keeps happening, and you just want to get out of the problem, how do I get out of this situation? Where is the exit? Can I just run away and go back? Know that Jesus is telling you to go forward because we move forward in the Lord. We don't go back. So we need a friend to help us. We need someone to talk to us. And Jesus says, I no longer call you servant, I call you friend. When he was talking to the disciples and he was saying, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, he also told them a comforter will come. I will send somebody to you. And the Spirit of God, Jesus, in, in spirit, would come. John 14, 16 through 20 says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world seeth me no more, but you see me, because I live, you shall also live. In that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Jesus could not be everywhere all at once. As God in flesh, he could only be in one place. But as God in spirit, the Holy Ghost, he can dwell in every person that will receive him. And the job, the function of the Holy Ghost is to bring us and guide us into truth and to comfort us. He calls him the comforter because he knows that sometimes when we work with the Lord, we do the will of God. That can be a very hard place to be. And he wants to speak that truth. He wants to be our Jonathan that would come in the middle of that stronghold and speak words of life because he is life. And when he speaks, life happens. So Jesus, the comforter, comes to us. His spirit dwells in us. And he breathed on the disciples. They received the Holy Ghost and they would have him personally, no matter what they went through. And they all went through different things. They all experienced different situations, different hardships, had different victories. It was different. Our walk with God is individual. It's different than the person next to us. And we need to hear something different than maybe our our friend or a brother or a sister in Christ. God has a right now word that will get you through, that will help you get through this hard time into this land of promise where he's taking you the next place the next position the next ministry the next relationship wherever you are headed in Christ the next victory he wants to help you get there John 12 47 through 48 Jesus says and if any man hear my words and believe not I judge him not for I came not to judge the world but to save the world He that rejecteth me and rejecteth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. So Jesus is telling us he's keeping his focus. If any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. That's a word for us, a word of encouragement. Keep your focus on what God has called you to do. There will be people who don't believe in what you're doing. There'll be people who don't believe in what God has told you or don't want to support you or there there are a lot of negatives in the world. But we have this great light that shines the way. And if we will keep our eyes on Jesus, he will lead us through those storms, lead us through those wilderness places and guide us into what he has for us to do, what his heart is for your life, what he wants you to accomplish, who you will help who is supposed to hear you because there's somebody that needs what only you can provide your walk with the Lord. David needed Jonathan and nobody else would work except Jonathan and the Lord bound them together in purpose. And so you have someone that you need to reach out to maybe even today that will be encouraged by your voice and what you have to say to them. 
don't wait for someone to encourage you. Go encourage somebody else. And in the encouraging, by being a Jonathan, your life will be better. So be a giver (laughs) and give what God has freely we receive and freely we give. Don't hold it to yourself, but go out and do the work of the kingdom. If you're in the wilderness, I'd like to pray for you right now. I'd like to be your Jonathan and help you get out of your situation because God will hear our prayer. He will answer when we call. So in Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you for my friends who are listening. And I thank you for the call in their life. I thank you that what they experience, only you know. You alone know the depths of the wilderness. You alone know the depths of the dry places. You alone are with them all hours of the day. You know their thoughts before they think it. You know their heart. You know why they do what they do and what they say what they say. Jesus, be that comforting voice. Be the one who guides them through and helps them in their time of trouble. When it seems like nobody else is around, nobody else cares, Lord, you care. And you want to help us. You're a very present help in trouble. So we thank you for the gift of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for sending your comfort. God, you didn't have to do that. You could have just sent your wrath. You could have just sent your rules. You could have sent your condemnation. But you chose to send your love and your comfort. And we receive of that. And I ask that you would bless my friend beyond what they could ever even imagine, God. That it would be so great that what you have ahead of them would be so wonderful that when it comes to pass, it will all be worth it. All the pain, all the heartache, all the fear, everything that the storm brought will have been worth it because you are worth it. You alone are worthy. And so we praise you and we thank you and we bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I hope you have enjoyed this week's episode, and I would love to hear what the Lord has put on your heart. I invite you to join me for a live Bible study on Facebook or YouTube every day at 5 a.m. Central. In this study, we are moving faith forward as we connect with Jesus by making Him the first thought on our mind. Visit AshleyEnos.com to find books, Bible studies, and more. And you can always find me on Facebook or YouTube.